This is Mark and Charity's Coffee Podcast. Hi there, it's the Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast for Wednesday, March 23rd. Coming up, what is fubbing? <laughs> Are you guilty of fubbing? Have you been fubbed? I actually asked you if it was clean enough to talk about this on the air this morning because I did not know what fubbing was and it sounds... Like it's it, intriguing. It could it could go either way. Like it could be a podcast discussion, but not a radio <laughs> exactly. discussion. Exactly. But we did talk about it on the radio, so it is a clean topic. Three signs you know you're a fubber, three ways to stop fubbing. Coming up I hate to admit it, I am. I am. Yeah. Not a bad one, I'd say, but I, I have done it. And uh, also, we'll let you know about our Throwback Thursday themes ahead of, ahead of the Academy Awards on the weekend which is going to be Sunday night in Los Angeles, California, back to a more standard version in the Kodak Theater, correct? Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of... Um, the virtuals. It's going to return a lot to what it was. So like that's the hosts up. are coming back, for instance. Right. We haven't had a host for the Oscars in... A couple of years. Two or three years. Yeah. And now they've yeah. got three. And they're all women and I'm this all year. For, I'm all for that, but... I, I, I won't share my thoughts on why I think they should just have one person all I the know, time. I know. Dedicated one person. That's their job. Well, you should share your thoughts. On Friday, we'll talk about, or oh. even Monday, one of those, because we'll be talking about it, I'm sure, at some point. Yeah. Of the nominations and everything. So share it, yes, because I think it's a very valid and interesting point, and it makes sense. It'll, but it'll never work because, because it makes way sense. too many egos. Way too many <laughs> egos. But right off the top, right off the top, can we talk about the stuff that we did on the show this morning? Because with it, well, you, off the, the top, uh, the throwback, the songs. No, well, oh, off okay. the top, the off the, top. Uh, the so study came ago. out that said that the average person can't do ten push-ups. Oh yes, yes, okay, can't yes. do ten push-ups. So you graciously filmed my very yeah, I didn't, bold I, athletic <laughs> attempt. You attempted it. I just no, I know. <laughs> And I got to 10. Yes. And I am ashamed to say it was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be, even for a man my age, which then I got shamed by text that came in. One guy said, I'm 70 and I do 40 as a warm up. And all of the other, but he wasn't bragging about it. It's like, if you do it all the time and it becomes easier, it's amazing how fit you'd be. I know you think we have to go on these massive Chris Hemsworth mm-hmm. style workouts to look like The Rock. But if somebody said, if you do wall push-ups, which turns out are great for your core, well, you know, just do 15 of those. Well, it's yeah. amazing someone, how someone had suggested a little the, bit will do it. The wall push-ups as a... Um, modified exercise, Modified exercise, yeah. yes. So you don't have to get down on the ground. You just lean up against the wall. And yes, you groaned a lot louder doing Whoa. that one than when you were on the floor. And I have to point out, too, that if you watch the video, which is up on our Facebook page now, of Mark doing these push-ups, you say how difficult it was... You make it look easy Mm. because it wasn't a a struggle to do them. You weren't. Couldn't see my face. I (laughs) I could not see your face. No. Oh my gosh. But you kept the rhythm. It wasn't, there there wasn't any pausing. Half can't do it. Uh, A third of people said they could do five. I could do five. Do five. I'm confident I could do five. Yes. Now are these, and again, I bring up this term and I hate using it, but there is a difference. Are you, we're talking men's push-ups right. without dropping the Toes. knee. Toes. Yes. I yeah. can do five. Um, I think it's all remarkable. We br- I mean, I brought it up. Why it caught my eye was beach body. We all start talking <laughs> about like There's a New Year's resolution on January 1st, right, to lose yeah. weight. And then there's a new one about the first day of spring that says, okay, before this pasty thing ends up at Sandbanks Provincial Park, mm-hmm. um, I may want to get down on the floor and move the body a little bit to see what well, and you lose. I just happened to see a meme this morning as well that said, my thoughts and prayers going out to all of those pulling out their summer clothes and trying to fit into them. Yeah. Because, yeah, uh-huh. that's what uh-huh. it is. So when I began to think, all right, what, what can I do? I'll do but then to read, wow, 10 would be an accomplishment. That sounds like a good place to start. I have trouble with sit-ups because of my Meniere's uh, disease, which is uh, a vertigo issue. So doing Mm sit-ups, is I can't do them. Mm -hmm. It affects me. Well, now you can do wall push-ups. But I can do that. So I can... can, Because it works your core. right to the core. There you go. But anyway, so so check that out. Try five. If you can do 10, great. And then let us know, (laughs) A, if you you can do it. Because again, it's not a shame. We love videos too, if you want to share a video. Or was it harder than you thought it would be? Because in my head, I thought, 10, I can do... Did you really? 
Kind of. I kind of did. Really? I kind okay. of did. Well. Because again, in my head, my wife will say this all the time. You're not 18. I'm not even 58 anymore, <laughs> let alone 18. I know. I keep thinking I'm in high school and everything I can do in high school, I can do now. Because yeah. I haven't tried to do it in 30 years. Therefore, I can do it as well as I could do it 30 years ago. Nope. That's why emergency rooms were created. Yes, it is. For men like me who hurt themselves doing things that usually follow the line, hey, watch this. <laughs> oh, I can do that. Watch. <laughs> and then somebody needs to drive uh. me to the emergency room because I can't walk anymore. Uh, but if you can do 10. So that was, and thank you so much for the text, everybody. That was great. And then on Galaxy of Games this morning, we played our iPod Shuffle and Dallas won this morning. And our category was Lost But Not Forgotten. Dallas had never heard Sweets, Fox on the Run. Mm-hmm. So he we played it. <laughs> never heard that song. And that I just am shocked totally he has never heard day. that song. How can you not have heard that song? Because, yes, as someone pointed out, and that was very nice of them, that I was not born when that song came out. That's right. But I still know it. I love it. And that was the song we shared. That's why we were both rocking out to it in here. I mm-hmm. love Sweet. Are you kidding me? Ballroom Blitz yep. as well. A great song. So, Dallas, there's no excuse. No uh, excuse why you have not heard that song. The opening guitar riff in Love is Like Oxygen. Dun, 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 dun. We're not allowed to play because it's a podcast. It would flag us if we yes. played no, real we music we on it. So you can't have up with me going, dun, 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 dun. They'll flag just for that. Stop doing that. But that was great. So thank you, everybody, on that. We got a lot of texts from people who dug that. Although you're probably right. We should have waited for Friday because we need a good well, Friday hey, song. we play Ballroom Blitz on Friday. So that happened this morning, and then we talked about fubbing. Fubbing is when you are in a social situation and you use your phone to snub the people you're with. Fubbing, phone Mm -hmm. snubbing. And it's not you snubbing your phone, it's the other way around. (laughs) And the most common one, and you pointed out because it it literally triggered you because you physically reacted, you went, oh, is when you sit down with another couple or three couples, you decide you're going to go for dinner. Even one other person. Okay. And the phone goes on the table. That's what drives me nuts because as soon as you said this, I had one person come to mind in particular. And a friend, a good friend. Mm -hmm. But it drives me insane because she constantly has her phone out. It just, it's there. And she's checking it. Mm -hmm. And she'll be talking to me and checking it. Yep. And it drives me insane. And regardless of whether they are physically touching or doing it, because it's there, you know that you can be having a great conversation mm-hmm. and any little blip is going to end that conversation and going to go right to their phone. Exactly. They need to see the notification of who put up a new picture on Facebook. And I, I will the sit there in silence. I, uh-huh. I refuse to yeah. draw them back but what if do it you, happens. What do you do? That's it? You just wait? Um, if it goes on long enough, I get my own phone out and I ignore them. And that's exactly what research <laughs> says is a bad thing because they said part of what will lead you there is you'll go on social media, which can be a negative thing, mm-hmm. and it creates well, this spiral. Not just going on your own phone, but what does that say to you when you're out with a, another individual? Like I said, it doesn't even it, it's worse, I think, when it's one-on-one. Yeah. You've arranged to meet. They want to sit down with you and visit, and then they're more interested in, your, in their phone. What does that then tell that person? Okay, I guess I'm not mm-hmm. a priority for you. You really don't want to spend this time. Like that take in itself, technology aside, you then feel yeah. lacking and bad about yourself because clearly I can't hold your attention. The three things that people have said is, number one, you feel rejected. Yes. You feel excluded Mm -hmm. and you are unimportant. Yep. And my thought is, so I'm really, I'm just a prop here at Tim Mm -hmm. Hortons so that you don't have to sit at this table alone. You you invited me to meet you for a coffee and then you spend the whole time on your phone. I'm glad that we're spending this time together. Mm Mm-hmm. And then off you go because you got something or text or whatever. Great to see you. Bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was it really? Yep. So you are a fubber. If your phone is with you at all times because you're afraid you'll miss a call, a tweet, status update, whatever it is. So those are the three signs. You can carry on two conversations at once. Neither one of them is good. I've done that. Phone comes out at dinner (laughs) or other social settings, right? And uh, you can't get through a meal without checking your phone. Those are the top three signs. Mm -hmm. We just just discussed those. So what are three ways to stop it? They are incredibly obvious but must be stated. Number one, (laughs) make meals a no-phone zone. 100%. And uh, I'd, I'd heard this story before, and a couple of people texted it in, is that 
if you're out having a social or a business and it's a no phone get together because people have recognized that that's a problem. First person who reaches for their phone pays for everybody. So I think that's, that's a great idea. The penalty yeah. of checking your phone. And the individual texted in and said, I'm a big eater and nobody's had to pay yet. <laughs> and they know, I'm a big eater. Like, <laughs> you're going to pay for everything if yep. you grab your phone when I'm there. Number two, leave your phone behind. Not necessarily maybe at home, but if you are popping in somewhere for a half hour coffee, leave it in the car. Yep. No reason to bring That's it in. Tougher, I, I, guess. I get that it's hard, but if you're a fubber, like you could have it in your purse and hear it if you're expecting a problem. But if it was just like a beep that you know is a Facebook status, it's not it's not gonna stop you if you're not mm-hmm. a fubber. We're talking about people who are basically obsessed with having their phone. Oh it's yeah. attached to their hand. Yes. You've got to leave it behind. And then the third one we kind of chuckled about and you pointed out was a little pathetic. Oh but ridiculous. it's ridiculous. Is challenge yourself by giving yourself a prize rewarding yourself for if you do that keeping your phone at home right. or not yeah interacting with it for a certain amount of time right yes it makes it made me roll my eyes a little it's bit. a bit of a first world problem certainly i think of a child that's how you encourage positive behavior in a child or how the experts say you you reward good behavior right mm-hmm. and i'm not saying you can't or you shouldn't because we do it in different ways all the time but to reward not using your phone for an hour does seem a little ridiculous so i got these new shoes <laughs> I'm sure it is. No. But I will say it. I apologize to you. I am sorry because I know I'm guilty of it in here during the morning. We'll be sitting and I'll just well, pick up my phone and I start looking. And well, I will wife. say things do come out of that that end up on the show. So it's not <laughs> all bad. It's some there of is a purpose prep. to it sometimes. But no, sometimes I will get a text from my husband and I will see it and be like, oh, okay. I'm just going to text him back. And then I end up ignoring you. So I apologize for that. Uh, three hours in a room with me is plenty. <laughs> I wouldn't subject it on anybody. <laughs> and back to the reward, you know, I had, I had read part of dieting and working out is, mm-hmm. you know, give yourself the reward when they say, you know, don't cut everything out. And yeah. I, one of the, the great ones I'd read about men is if you don't want to give up beer, only have one on days you work out. That's your reward for working out. If you didn't work out that day, then you can't have a beer. Hmm. Well, then maybe, you know, so... It, it's sort of the, if, if you want to worry about your diet and you don't want to give up beer, make sure you do something else that day. So yeah, it's, sort it's of kind the, of a give the, and take. Yeah, it's not really a reward, but it kind of is the reward yep. of making sure that you're you're keeping it between the lines on your health. So that's what fubbing is. And if, uh, if you can't think of anybody in your life who's a fubber, but you've lost your friends, guess what? <laughs> it's you. you. Sorry. And uh, try and find a way to, to get around that. As, as we all, you know, remove the mask and get out and do things again. Yep. And have to be civil. Like, are you worried you're going to forget some of those things? I don't think I am. I think I, think I remember I think how to ex- act in public. I think public. the excitement is, is still high enough that people will remember. They'll be mm-hmm. so happy to be out that they'll be on their best behavior and yeah. aware of it. I told you when I went and saw uh, Spider-Man... Far from home, there were a couple of young guys sitting behind me that talked through the whole movie. Yeah. And I had to ask them twice, like, come guys. on, guys, we're in mm-hmm. public. Like, don't you remember what it's like to be in a movie? That's really annoying. Now, mm-hmm. I didn't say all of that. I just said, guys, come yeah, on. that's the extent. Because mm-hmm. I put on my dad voice, or who's kidding who? Probably my grandfather voice. Uh, guys. And But so anyway, watch fubbing. Watch fubbing. Okay. And then tomorrow, throw back Thursday in honor yes. of the Academy Awards so on Sunday. For this. Yes. It really is. We were talking about uh, one in particular category, the original song category, which is always a big one. Mm-hmm. That along with, of course, actor and actresses supporting and the movie itself, song always seems to be a big one. And through the years, we've had some fantastic songs given Oscars. Uh, we went back as far as, I want to say even the 40s when we were looking at some of the songs that right. have been honored. Moon and River. I, exactly. Um, the Way We Were, mm-hmm. the theme song. Um, uh, Officer and a Gentleman. Was that the... Was, Up Where We Belong yes. from 1981. And there was a bit... Of, it's funny to see throughout the decades how it changes. The genres, we'll say, because a lot of romantic movies during the 70s and the 80s, you know, the corny rom-coms as well. I would say Disney was the big winner through the 90s. There seemed to be a Disney film 
every year and it was right. kind of a given if there was a Disney film the song from that film was going to be the big yeah. winner Lion and King exactly Aladdin's Beauty and the Beast Aladdin yeah. uh, Tarzan yeah. was in there Love you in my heart one. exactly yeah. <laughs> this year again another Disney song nominated but surprisingly not the one I think most people thought would be yeah. nominated and Canto was a huge film here's why and it's because when the movie and the soundtrack was being put together they had to nominate a song. They had to submit a song for submission. Mm-hmm. Lin Juan Manuel Miranda had no idea. We're not going to talk about Bruno. Was going to become the cultural <laughs> really? hit you it don't became. Think so? He did not. Oh, that was not the love theme from Encanto. Well, so he had, and I can't pronounce. I can't even think of the name of it. The, the Dos Orguitas. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So that was to be the signature song of the movie, mm-hmm. and it turned out no thanks. Thanks. We don't. We don't. <laughs> we don't because you can't. Bruno. They, they didn't want to submit more than one. Yes. Otherwise, they cancel out. So they whiffed on the one that became, you know, like Frozen well, was lucky. It was let it go. Yes. They all They all got that one right. But what if it turned out to be one of the other ones? Well, and kind of playing along those. I'm. I'm glad you said the love theme because another um, critic or uh, Oscar follower basically said the same thing. They said the category itself isn't a reflection of what might be the lighter, more popular song. It's the song that elevates the movie yes. that actually tells the greater story right of the movie I get that. and we don't talk about bruno as popular as it's become and as fun and and sing along a bull as it is because we've all done it it's a big one in our house um the dos origuitas actually tells the entire story of what the movie wanted to encom- yeah. encompass. So that's why that one was nominated. Mm-hmm. And it is a four, it is a, a front runner. They say it's either going to come to that one or another popular theme that we see in the original song category, the Bond wow. theme from Billie, Billie Eilish. They yeah. say it's going to be one of those. So Disney or Bond. And that again was our theme this week for Throwback. It was a Disney film and a Bond film that we got our songs from. Team Mark has got Skyfall from Adele from mm-hmm. 10 years ago. And at recording time, I think it's got a couple of more votes. A few. A lot of Adele fans. <laughs> but, but again, because I went with Frozen's Let It Go. Let It Go. And it might have been, a lot of people have just let it go because right. it was so big the year it went nine we years will ago. not allow 15-year-old girls to vote, just to make it fair. So you keep saying 15-year-old girls. Parents sang that song. Boys sang that song because my kids sang that song. I, I it was a big one. I victimized of a neighbor who's young girl seven or eight years ago when she was six or seven. Would just belt it out. Over and over in the backyard. And it was so great in the wintertime. You know why? Because she would build, she would build Olaf. She'd build a she snowman. she would sing it. Yep. And she would just, she would Aww, stand on the snow and sing Let It Go. So she would recreate the amazing. snow. Amazing. So to me in my head, she's probably 15 now. So forever. 15 years. She's, she's 15 She's the little now. girl she singing about the song. Six years old. Do you want to build a snowman? But you know, and, and not to, not to, I don't want to say put a, be a downer, but we saw this song come up again. Was it last week? Or the week before. The footage of the little girl, the oh, Ukrainian little yes, girl, though, yes. singing Let It Go in the, in the yeah. um, shelter, the bomb shelter, Wasn't the subway that, station. That was it amazing. Was beautiful. Yeah. It was absolutely. And in fact, she was invited to, I'm trying to think what gathering, but she sang the Ukrainian um, national anthem this past weekend. Mm. She's safe. She's, yeah, she's with her grandmother, um, but it was a gathering of diplomats, um, people high up in the government right. anyway, this yeah. past weekend, yeah. and she sang the Ukrainian That's great. national anthem. Good Beautiful voice. But there again, that song... Brings people together. It really does. Team charity. That's or what I do. That's what I try to do. Skyfall. Either way, winning song coming up tomorrow morning after the 8 o'clock news brought to you by Burger Revolution. Experience flavor freedom for takeout. Visit burgerrevolution.ca. Uh, find out about the Shogun Burger, which oh is the gosh. burger of the month, and how they turned the Shogun oh. Burger into a salad. They are, like, unbelievable. <laughs> the funny thing is, they did a salad. I looked at the picture, and I thought it was french fries. Yeah. I'm like, they made it into a poutine, <laughs> which they could do, I right. think, as if you well. Asked. If you asked, I'm sure Jeff and the gang down there would do that very easily. But very it's easily. delicious. So get your votes in. That's coming up tomorrow morning. It's the Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast. Here on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts and link to our social media sites. It's a throwback Thursday tomorrow morning. So join us on 95.5 Hits FM.